Look, I've been ostracized, I've been bullied, and I've been rejected all my fucking life. I've been kicked out of bars, I've been kicked out of clubs, I've been kicked out of classes, I've been kicked out I've been I've been kicked out of churches, man. And look, you could be like Pierre, you probably did something to ask for it. And guess what? Maybe I maybe I did. And maybe sometimes that I actually deserved every bit of it. But there were situations that I look back objectively now and I can say I did nothing other than express myself honestly and be who I want to fucking be. And you know what? I didn't always look like this. And I didn't always act like this. In fact, when, when I was younger, I looked like a fucking nerd. I, I was a fucking dork, man. And throughout the years, I've evolved. My spirits evolved. And with that, my physicality changed. Puberty helped as well. My costumes changed because, you know, we have a blank canvas that we can accessorize and decorate ourselves. And I went through a lot of different stages of spiritual development to get where I am today. And, and I'll tell you one thing. No matter what I did, no matter how I dressed, no matter how I behaved, no matter how I talked, no matter how I laughed, no matter how I cried, there was always something fucking wrong with me. And I always got the same fucking response. And now, as, as, as brilliant and as, as amazing as my life is right now, and there's so much positivity and love and community, more than I've ever had in my fucking life right now, there are still, there's still something wrong because I have to read all of these fucking comments from strangers with this presupposition that I'm some sort of pretentious pseudo-intellectual fuckboy that manipulates others for fun. Even though I'm the one who's been manipulated by lovers and others, literally, my best friend robbed me when I was in high school. I've been condescended upon, neglected, challenged, and rejected by everyone who I've been in fucking contact with for as long as I can fucking remember. And you know what? Here's the thing. You get your shins kicked hard enough, it hardens them. So when you kick back, you won't feel a fucking thing. And you might hear that and you might be thinking, oh, you live a great life. Look at you now. Blah, blah, blah. You know, why are you so angry? Why are you screaming in your videos? Why are you, why are you, why are you expressing yourself? Why are you having emotions? Why do you feel a certain way you do? You have it all good. You're a trust fund baby. You have all this. Like, blah, blah, blah. Look, I'm not here to play victim. In fact, I fucking hate that. Anything that I feel victimized over, I have went 120% of the way to solve and resolve that issue. And you know what? After dealing with, after years and years of dealing with people's animalistic behavior, I've learned to stand up for my fucking self. You know, I've learned how to stand up straight. I've learned how to scream when I needed to. Learning how to scream, literally, the act of using your fucking body to belt your existence on this earth is one of the most powerful things that you can do. I've had to learn how to always be ready for fucking conflict. I've always had to learn to be ready for verbal, spiritual, and metaphorical combat, physical as well. I've had to practice how to learn. I, you, know, you have to learn how to verbalize in the face of combat and conflict because God forbid you actually going the physical route and that should always be the last resort. In fact, it should never be unless that gets delivered upon you first and you have every right to, to defend yourself. And ultimately, you need to learn how to be scary. Being scary being scary will take you many places. And it doesn't mean to always be scary, but learning how to develop that part of you where you can be. Because you know what? You don't ever actually have to fight. You don't ever have to fight. You just need to learn to present yourself as if you can't fight, as if you can kick fucking ass. You need to show that you at least look like you can kick ass. But also learning how to fight helps as well. 
show on your face that you know what the fuck you're talking about and that you're ready to engage in conflict if the, if it needs to be. And half of the time, they won't say shit. They'll just be like, oh, yeah, oh, sorry, like I didn't mean to offend you. But yeah, right, you didn't mean to offend me, but guess what? I'm fucking offended. And everyone wants to say you're offended over everything. But guess what? There are situations where you can be validly offended. And you know what? Most, like like animals, most animals aren't actually willing to fight. There's this video. <laughs> There's this video of like like 10 bison. And they surround like this goose. And the bison are like pissed. This, this one tiny little goose is like right here. And this bison's like... This motherfucker, what the hell? And, they, and they, the bison starts charging the goose. <laughs> and, and the fucking goose just doesn't move, just looks at the thing. And the bison keeps charging. <laughs> and all the other bison, too. <laughs> and they're just watching. And the, the goose just goes. <laughs> and then the fucking bison goes. Ah! And it freaks the fuck out. And this goose is like the size of the bison's foot. But yet the bison wouldn't even charge this thing that even that w- all it took was the bison just to step on the goose and it would have died. But guess what? Animals, when they, they're about to engage in conflict, they are actually just bluffing and just spreading their wings and being bigger just so they can scare off the other one without actually engaging in physical conflict because they both know what's on stake and they both don't actually want to get hurt. Look, I don't care how small you think you are and how tiny and incapable you are. If you present yourself as larger than life and you believe that you are larger than life, then you are, especially to everybody around you, and they will see that. So if you believe that, so will they. And when you finally integrate that part of yourself, you'll finally be ready for fucking anything. And all of a sudden, the bullies will start disappearing. And in fact, they'll probably try to defriend you, befriend you. You know, I had a friend in an improv show. And he was my best friend. We're not friends anymore, but he, he, I, I really loved him and he was awesome. He was the funniest dude. He was the most talented guy. He could play every single instrument. He was like, he was amazing, dude. He was fucking amazing. And he just happens to be black, which is obviously not a fucking issue. We live in a conservative, mostly white society. And it's not about the race thing, but it's the idea of being different in the majority of society. He could have been, I don't know, Asian in a completely Hispanic society. He could have been Hispanic in a completely, I don't know, fucking alien society or whatever the fuck. Doesn't matter. The fact is the majority is outnumbering the minority. And in this case, he's black. Everyone else here is white. And this fucking dude, he's on, my, my friend is performing on stage, being hilarious. This dude right behind me, I just hear. Oh, there's the token black guy. No one laughed because it's not funny. And I said to him, hey, can you keep it down? We're trying to watch the show. He ignores me. My friend gets another laugh on stage and I hear. Oh, that, of course, there's another black joke. I'm like, hey, man. Hey, man, we don't we don't say that here. Like, we don't deal with that here, man. Don't do that. And he goes, okay. He starts mumbling to himself a little more. Then there's another laugh from my friend. And then he just straight up says the most racist shit. Like, I seriously, I don't even want to fucking repeat it. I don't even want to throw that out there because it was so fucking offensive. It was so fucking bad that I, I, I had to stop the show. I literally stood up and I told him, hey, how about you say that one more time and tell everyone here what you just said? Of course he goes, uh, 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 I just said that like, he just like, uh, you know, he just wanted to do, no, 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 no. Let's have you say exactly what you just said to, so that everybody here can hear what you said. I said, oh, uh, yeah, I just, I just said, oh, uh. so then I, the manager of the place says, Hey guys, take it outside. So we go outside and turns out he's, um, 
in the military. He happens to be white because being white doesn't mean you're racist, but he just happens to be white. And he starts saying really racist shit to me. And he says, oh, well, yeah, I was just enjoying the show. Uh, oh, sorry. I was just enjoying the show. And then the small dick anime character decided to say something. And I was like, you got something right. I'm an anime character. Ah, wink on that bitch. Yeah. You got thrown out. I got to watch the rest of the show. And you know what? This wasn't the last time this kind of shit has happened. Living around here, man. This happened again. Some dude yelled the N-word with, with my friend there in the movie theater. Called him out. Say that again. Why are you saying that? Tell me. Why is it okay for you to say that? Some asshole walked by my friend who was not in a place to deal with conflict, let alone stand up for himself. This fucking frat boy. Huge and screams at him. Fuck you for no fucking reason. And guess what I did? I, I, I was right behind him and I yelled, fuck you right back. And he didn't even turn around. Because guess what? They're just as scared as you are half the time. Because if you don't say anything, the silence is permission for shitty behavior. You need to learn how to speak up when it's necessary. And I usually give it three chances. Politely ask the first, be stern the second, and after the third, it's fair game. But here's the thing, you need to take responsibility for what you have to say as well, because you also might be in the wrong. So you got to be real careful and be objective as possible and try to determine if this person is actually being an asshole and offensive. Because sometimes you might be in the wrong, but that's the chance that I'm willing to take to say the right thing. And when you speak up, be fucking loud, because here's the thing. You are stronger, and you are way more capable than you could ever think. It's in all of us. I was never like this. I was always pushed around. I had glasses. I had braces. People did not take me seriously. People, they, they wouldn't, they, they thought, I mean, if a fly flew into me, I'd get knocked the fuck out. And guess what? I had to deal with all of that shit for a decade before I got to fucking where I am now, being able to take on the goddamn world. And guess what? If I can do it, so can you. And I believe in you 150 fucking percent. Because once we can learn to stand up for ourselves, we can finally learn how to stand up for each other. And at that point, all these sensitive intellectuals and emotional beings with depth and compassion, if we can integrate the spirit of a fucking samurai and a goddamn warrior, then we are unfucking stoppable because we can deliver the world something that it's needed for the last thousands of years. We are unfucking stoppable. Thanks for joining XO Live. I'm your motherfucking boy, Pierre XO. See ya! Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck.